Hey everybody and welcome to episode 181 of the Revive Yourself podcast. Here we go. Are you sick and tired of being sick and tired? Have you got a health issue that just won't go away no matter what you try? Then welcome to the Revive Yourself podcast, where we reveal the secrets to long-lasting health by getting to the root cause of problems that no one else is talking about. So you can have more energy, clear skin, healthier hair, a leaner physique, more confidence, and most importantly, do the things you love and live the life you deserve. Here's your host, Ryan Martin. So guys, welcome back to the show. This is episode 181 and we've got a great guest for you today and that is Jake Maverick. Jake is someone that I've been following on Instagram for about a year. When he comes to my attention, he's been part of the fight that's been going on against the tyranny that we find ourselves um, under at the moment. And so we're going to be talking a lot about what's been going on and the upcoming march on saturday i wanted to get this out to you before then so you could all listen so we'll be going into that as always the podcast episode is sponsored by www.revive yourself in the shop over there where we have high quality supplements and really just whole foods in concentrated form uh, that are going to allow you to give your body the best nutrients on the planet so you can start to detoxify get vitality and really perform at the level you want to um so You know, whether you're looking for high quality vitamin C or vitamin D, you've got that under the ancient purity bracket. Um, click on that. You've also got the, um, royal jelly over an ancient purity, which is what Bruce Lee exclusively puts in his tea. Um, it's full of amino acids. Sorry. What Bruce Lee puts in his tea, but it's what the queen bee exclusively eats. It's full of amino acids, building blocks for muscle, brain function, etc. And then we've also got the best digestive enzymes and probiotics on the planet from bio-optimizers, um, bio-optimizers and, uh, and, and also the HCL, which is going to be fantastic for anyone who feels that they need some help with digesting food. The enzymes can be taken away from food to clean any debris in the body with food to help you digest food, uh, along with the HCL. And then the probiotics are also fantastic to be taken on an empty stomach to help repopulate the gut or with food to help you break it down. So it can be used in conjunction um, or on their own. And then we've got all the quality supplements we've got from Finchley Clinic, including the three T's, Pau Darko, Quedra Pedra and Cat's Claw. They're all supplement strength, uh, immune boosting. A Cat's Claw, um, very good for gut health. Quedra Pedra for breaking down any stones, so it's great for kidneys and liver. And and Paldarco, which is antiviral, antiparasitic, antifungal, antimicrobial, so it's great for really cleaning out the system. Um, And as always, we've got the uh, water filtration systems, so whole house water filtration systems from Aquatea. If you've got one, two, three or four bedroom house, hard or soft water, we've got options for you there. I always recommend getting that done if you can because it's not just the water you drink, it's also the water you bathe in, wash your clothes in, brush your teeth in. Um, also got the essential oils from our friend Dr. Nick Berry over at essentialoilwizardry.com for the best essential oils on the planet. Use the code REVIVED for 10% off and also Blue Blocks, B-L-U-B-L-O-X for the best blue blocking glasses on the on the market as well. Once again, code REVIVE for 10% off from my man, Andy Manf. Um, so I'm also in the middle of trialing lots of different products from a few companies, and they will be on the site shortly. Um, they will be on the site shortly. I'm just getting through them, getting some really, really good results, really liking a lot of them. So once I've gone through them all, you'll, you'll be the first to know, and they'll be on the site. But everything we have on our, our, our website, you know, it's all high, high quality. I wouldn't sell anything I wouldn't take myself. Um, and that's that's the difference, you know. Most supplements on the market are complete garbage. This is why we only promote the best. And as I said before, they're whole foods in concentrated form. Um, so, so with that taken care of, let's get into the show. Here um, I am speaking to Jake Maverick. And yeah, we go through quite a lot of stuff. So enjoy and I'll see you on the other side. It's nice to finally uh, get to speak to you, Jake. You know, we've been uh, had a bit of a back and forth a couple of times, and um, you've been someone that over the last year or so, you know, I've been um, 
it's been a pleasure to, to share the uh, the battle with when it comes to this. You've been putting out lots of really good qual- uh, quality information. You know, been getting people aware to what's going on. Also, you know, spitting a lot of truth when it comes to people understanding what's going on, what's really going on, but also getting people to understand history. That like have a lot of people who seems they've got no idea what is actually um, at play here and haven't it's like as i say his story right it's his story whoever wins gets to write history but if you if you look back uh what people have done um and what's happened it's like all you have to do is read certain things soviet union you know communist china um go through a few cambodia to understand what what's at play here so just 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 people out there because jake before about before last year um you know you come to my come to my sort of yeah, attention about a year ago what was it that got you into into this into this battle and uh we made you speak out on it um well there's a lot of things that happened last year that we were starting to see that was um it was fishy it was fishy as fuck and it was just a uh you started to see the government do things they shouldn't have been able to do um which is lock people in their homes um to start telling people that they can't see their families to say that they can't can't go to work and at first you're like okay fine right we'll lock down because if we have the lockdown put this back on um we'll put the lockdown on and um that way we'll get our lives back you know we just we just hold tight sit tight and uh, hopefully it all blows over and um that wasn't the case um i lost both my grandparents last year i lost my mum's fiance last year all within the space of about two three weeks i can't remember exactly exactly but uh, my grandma died um about two weeks after my mum's fiance and then the day after that my granddad passed away and i think what was the kicker was when we weren't allowed to go into the hospital to see um my granddad passing away so my grandma died at home she was with my mum and then my granddad was in hospital and uh i got a call um i wasn't at home at the time i got a call randomly from my brother he said they're pulling the plug um he was basic my granddad was basically in hospital with pneumonia and um the doctor said it was covid pneumonia we're unconvinced um, because my mum was always looking after him and she didn't catch COVID till December, allegedly. Um, so we got a call. Uh, well, I got a call from my brother. Um, and basically what we had to do is because we weren't allowed to into the hospital, uh, we had to watch him die on a, a video chat. You know, a doctor was recording him as he was dying. And... Uh, you you can't really explain how that feels to someone um you know that stays with you forever because you can't physically be with that person you just you're just watching this person uh your family just pass away on camera right in front of you and it's happening in real time and you can't it's still a very weird sensation you can't really put it into words and to you know to physically watch a family member die right in front of your eyes you know, in person, it's one thing, but on camera, it's a very different sensation. And it's um, something I don't wish upon anyone because um, it's, yeah, it was, that was a big up wake up. That was a massive wake up call um, where it was like, they've stopped people seeing their families that are dying in hospital. This is so wrong. And it's, it just showed us how callous we can be. Um, and after that, I was just like, no, nah, this is, this has gone too far and I was really, it became a little bit personal, but I was seeing, you know, what the agenda was before this was happening. And at first I would admit, I thought COVID was, you know, it was quite serious for the older generation, especially we didn't really know what it was. Um, You know, I I was already following the lab leak hypothesis um, from Brett Weinstein, uh, Weinstein, I I don't know how you pronounce it, but it's either one of those, I think it's Weinstein. And um, you start to see that you know there's a lot of the narrative that we aren't being told. So the more we follow it, the more you start to see that we're not being told the truth, and they're doing these things to not keep us safe. It's to control us and to usher in a new 
essentially a new world order. And I hate using that phrase because it gets conflated with the, you know, the tinfoil hats. That's the stereotype that we get when we use that. But they've openly come out and said, look, th these officials are saying, you know, you're not getting your old normal back. You're getting a new normal. And when you hear them say that, Right in, your, right in front of your faces while they're stopping you from seeing your dying family members and stopping you from earning your living and uh, stopping you from enjoying what life's about, you start to feel shit. Like, this is, you know, this is serious. Um, so it's one of those things where you just have to, you, you have to, you know, you're this, you're basically, uh, you're basically chasing you're trying to catch a ghost. You don't know who's in charge. You have no idea what's going on. You just know that these politicians and these scientific officials in front of your face aren't telling you the truth. And you have to find out what the truth is. And that's been my goal ever since then, just to find out what the hell was going on. I won't know the exact truth. I won't ever, um, you know, I won't ever hundred um, percent say that I know the exact truth, but I, do know a lot of things and one thing i do know is that we are being lied to mm. and ever since you know the personal things that happened to me but i knew this was happening before this um so like a uh, few years before about three four years ago i had my instagram instagram account was talking about all kinds of stuff about you know forced uh, cultural clashes through um you know um multiculturalism that was siphoning people into different communities that was you know pinning people against each other, um, using certain, um, you know, the, the whole trans agenda where they're saying that a man can identify as a woman. You start to see these wacky little things unfold and become normalised and you're like, okay, this is getting a bit strange now. And all of a sudden we get hit with this massive, um, this it's basically a big smack in the face where you're, you're told this is it this is where your life changes from here on out. And that's when, you know, that's when shit got real and that's when the battle started. Yeah, mate. I mean, to be, to be honest, I'm sorry to hear that about your, your family to go through that. No one should ever have to go through that. And that's what they, one of the things that they have done is they're trying to get rid of compassion. They're trying to get rid of anyone who, um, they're trying to get rid of human humanity, like that feeling towards each other. It's always, you know, black versus white, rich versus poor, left versus white. Uh, right now it's masked versus unmasked vaccinated versus unvaccinated divide and conquer and they always do and also when you're in that state when you're when you're angry or scared etc in your limbic brain you're not thinking clearly that's when you can you know, you're, you'll do whatever you can to get your your freedoms back and so yeah for you it goes it goes back quite a while i mean this is same same as myself jane you know, i've been researching these companies and these things for like 12 years so this was no yeah. this was no surprise to me but it was surprised at how quick it had came, and uh, and I yeah. wasn't I wasn't surprised at how many people fell for it. My friends were; they didn't believe that people were this were, were this brainwashed. And I was like, no, no, people are. I don't think you understand. Like when you even to simple stuff that people don't understand um, when it comes to health, like basic principles, you know, when it comes to that. And so they're gonna, and because they're so, they've been we've been sold the the, the instant gratification lifestyle. Everyone's too busy watching shows like love island they're not listening to or watching things that are actually meaningful doing the research this is why um they've been able to t t take this and just run with it and people think like you you said you know to keep on complying they get their life back but that's been showing you they keep on how many times do people have to be lied to before they wake up you know they keep on moving the goalposts yeah. every every minute and they say oh, even recently we saw someone i um, can't remember his actual name because they the names are pretty irrelevant to me but said that we never introduce vaccine passports you can hold me to that and lo and behold they've said that they'll be introducing them um with well, yeah. six weeks which i wanted to talk to you about but you know and even them they've managed to brainwash the public i said i put out a tweet the other day saying you know dr malone the inventor of the mrna vaccine says he's got grave concerns about what's going on um yeah um and and carrot Car Car mullis the inventor of the pcr test said that they're not meant to be used as a diagnostic tool and yet the yeah. media have managed to get fact checkers to brainwash people into saying that that's not true it's like it's coming from the horse's mouth um and so you know i i completely understand what where you're coming from and it's, and it's actually refreshing to understand um, for some 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 people like they they 
understand where this is going just on well they just concentrate on one aspect of it but this is all part of uh, it's like a tree with all different branches to it the trans transhuman agenda the, then you're talking about you're talking about um we said before uh, about the um, masculine feminine you know every, everyone's the same and then you're looking at what dan fellong's been going in on about the cyber attacks you know uh, yeah. there's lots of things going on right now and so it's um have you with your accounts actually with your accounts on instagram have you been heavily shadow banned for speaking the truth Oh, absolutely! Yeah, the uh, main one, which is um, I think it's got about over just over thirty thousand followers. There's, <laughs> I was getting about anywhere between six thousand and ten thousand views of my stories within one day, which is when everyone started getting the notifications. Are you sure you want to follow this person? Mm. They've been, you know, spreading misinformation. Misinformation. As soon as that started to happen, within a day, it dropped to about four or five hundred people watching my stories down from about an average of about 6,000 people. And yeah. that's when you're like, okay, something weird's going on here. So I went on a backup and obviously I'm glad that the backup's picking up, but they're going to take down the backup. They're going to take down the mains. They're going to do everything they can. And, um, you know, they're going to make sure that their narrative is what sticks. But as we've seen with people like David Icke, you know, no matter how many platforms you get taken down from, as long as someone's speaking the truth, it will get out there and it will get out to people no matter, you know, I don't, I don't think anyone in this movement is going to be doing this for money or there'll be some people that do it for ego, but if you're doing it, to, you know, doing it for followers and shit, you, you got to get that out of your mind because no one's going to be, no one's going to be here. No, everyone's going to lose their, anyone that's talking about this is going to lose their Instagram account. I guarantee you there's, mm. there's not going to be many people left when they're done. Right. Let's so. put, put it this way. Like I, I've been for, mate, for 12 years, I've been building a, a business that goes against everything the mainstream stands for. So that I'm, um, and for me, yeah. it's about being followers. It's always been about just putting out the truth out there. And I know what you're talking, I know what you mean, but the, the funny thing with that, with, with that, as you said before, the truth will always get out there. People will be followed no matter what. Um, but the fact that they're doing that was that the thing, the quote is, you know, when you're afraid of what a man says, you want to cut out his tongue. You don't want to actually debate them. And when you've got people like Robert Kennedy Jr., who's just quoting CDC, quoting the who, and they get misinformation. It's like, how is it misinformation? But people have been so brainwashed to believe in it. Um, and so, you know, when it comes to, when it comes to to this stuff, yeah, the, the amount of the followers, it's just, uh, not from an ego standpoint, it, it's it's like trying to get that information out to as many people as possible because that's why I want yeah. to interview you now so I can get it. That's why I've gone on locals, you know, because I've been heavily censored, trying to go on there. I didn't want to put it behind a paywall, but it seems like the only way we can get information out uncensored because YouTube, Google, Facebook, Instagram, they're all part of the monopoly, um, monopoly tech companies that you know, they hide the information that you need to know. Just today, we was looking at it, um, it's come out, I uh, was just looking at information. For example, Dr. McCola, you know, the biggest natural health website in the world, his, his, his hits are down 600% because they just can't find him on Google. People don't understand that Google's now actually a pharmaceutical company and everything they do is backed by that. And um, also, what is it there? Um, YouTube's parent company, which is Google um, as well, is directly invested in AstraZeneca, Oxford COVID vaccine, which is why YouTube censors anything that threatens the rollout of these gene modification therapies. Um, yeah. and, and and they're also, Google also, also partnered directly with the US military, which is increasingly working on the transhumanist agenda. Um, and they go into it. So people understand how deep this goes. Um, and so it's really important for us to all come together. That's one of, that's one of, the, one of the things that has happened during this, Jake. You know, I've been speaking about a lot of these things for a while. And there's always been like in the health industry being, going around, which is great. But now it's up people, it's opened up to every, everyone from every background. You know, I mean, I don't know what you do for work. I, I don't think you're in the health industry, uh, if I'm correct. But you're, but you're speaking out about, about this, which is, which is awesome. And it's allowed more people to get their minds up because some people as you as i think you put post up today you're saying it, it's been two groups you know there's us that are awake to what's going on there's people that are fully asleep and there's the people in the middle who literally get literally get swayed either way depending on who puts out the information and yeah. you are waking those people up but like, i've seen people that have been vehemently against what we've been talking about for a long period of time finally be like you know what ryan it's just nothing's making any sense anymore i was like anymore but at least you're on the, at least you're coming at least you're becoming awake so it's good 
to um to, i mean it seems that your your followers are pretty engaged as well it seems that they're pretty awake yeah i mean there is more and more waking up as time goes on and i think that when the immunity passports have been announced you know the vaccine passports i think a lot of people are like shit this is happening you know we aren't the crazy conspiracy theorists that they were calling us at the beginning of last year we you know this was the slippery slope and you know when we're when i was saying um i think it was october time october so, november something like that might have even been september uh bbc news was saying no the vaccine won't be mandated blah 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 and i was like look just look at the language they're using and uh, you know they're not totally sure if you actually looked at what they were saying and um we've seen that flip on its head now where they said you know if you work in health uh work in care you're now gonna have to have the jab or you won't be able to work in care anymore um which is going to put a huge dent in the care industry because a lot i know a lot of um you know, carers that aren't going to be taking that jab and they would rather quit their job, mm -hmm. unfortunately, than take this jab. And I think, I don't think the people above give a shit. Um, they really don't care. They don't care about old people. They don't care about people losing their jobs. They don't give a shit. And that's what's, you know, that's what I think is the most um, terrifying thing about how, is literally how evil these people are. They just don't give a shit. And, um, you know, when they start mandating it to healthcare, they're going to spread to other areas of life. And um, I've already seen Bloomberg opinion. They've been uh, bringing up, you know, they have a, an entire an, an entire article dedicated to the case of mandating uh, vaccines. And it's just like when we've got companies like Bloomberg, you know, writing about why we should mandate vaccines, that's when you start to realise that they're all, they're all in on it. They know where this is going and, we got to prepare as much as possible and we got to push back. And the only way to do that is with civil disobedience and boycotts. You know, any businesses that are complying with this, I know there's going to be a lot of businesses that just want to get back up and running um, to get back to where they were um, because their businesses have been hit hard. So they want to do everything the government tells them. But I think, you know, doing anything the government tells you at this point after they've completely ruined your businesses, your livelihoods, stole your freedoms away, I think it's insane because it's not going to stop at vaccine passports. And um, when we start, you know, um, a lot of people are awake. And I think when the vaccine passports did come out, a lot of celebrities I've seen, especially the, you know, the Instagram influencers that have been on Love Island, for example, or Only Way is Essex. Um, for some reason, they hold a lot of public opinion, uh, weight with the public opinion. And a lot of people have been swayed by these people like... Uh, you know, I've seen, uh, what's that guy's name? Is that Dan, Os Dan Osborne? Mm, he's right. been speaking about it. He's a, I think he was Only Ways Essex guy. Okay. Uh, yeah, he's Only Ways Essex and he's been speaking out about it. And there's people, you know, um, from on our side, on our side or, or not? Yeah, they're on our side. They're on our, this is what's it's bonkers. As soon as it started happening, it's all, start, people starting to wake up. And uh, Professor Green, he made a post about how he's confused about vaccine passports. If the vaccines don't stop transmission, um, and it only stops you from being sick, why would you implement the vaccine passports? It, nothing's making sense. And that's when you start to realise these vaccine passports aren't there to protect people. They're there literally to coerce people into getting the vaccine and to track us and trace us at every given time. And when people give you the... Um, people start saying, you know, they'll, 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 they'll message you. You probably get trolls as well. It's like, oh, you're so fucking stupid. If they wanted to track you, they'd just go on your phone. It's like, well, you have safeguards and they can't legally do it. You know, you have these safeguards, you've got the VPNs, you can you can do a lot with your phone to protect yourself. Um a lot of people don't know. And, but you can, and you can you can you can also just leave your phone at home if you have to, if you want to. Exactly. If you don't want to be traced, you just leave your phone at home, don't use your personal details, you can do all of that. But as soon as you start using a di the digital identification system, that's it. And you know, when, when people say, oh, you know, these conspiracy theorists, when they talk about their implants in their arm and all that stuff, it's not going to happen. Oh, they start uh, conflating vaccines with implants. Um, you know, a lot of people in the Christian community, they, they uh, you know, they speak about the mark of the beast, um, et cetera, um, where they can't, you know, you can't trade or travel unless you've had the mark. I think it is I think I might have the other way around. Yeah, benefits and privileges. Well, you've been marked. 
yeah, uh, it's a bit biblical. Yeah, um, you know, they say oh, it won't happen. It's like we are going to see a world where we have implants at some point, and that sounds like a sci-fi movie. It sounds like a Tim hat conspiracy theory. Jack, it's already it's happened. Happening. It's already happened in America. Exactly. There's companies happened. that have, have microchipped their employees, and they now pay by clicking the thing like that on their wrist. And yeah. people don't understand how. Like when you look at because this whole team, people have no idea how deep this goes. And we can go into China and things like that. But when people talk about science, people have no idea. Scientists today are modern day prostitutes, you can pay to get any result you want. These companies, it's, it's like people don't understand. Big telecom, for example, is five times more powerful than big pharma. When people say, oh, the research shows that these electromagnetic frequencies are fine. It's like, really? Who done the test? Oh, well, Vodafone are telling you they're safe. Okay. Because all the independent yeah. studies show you how detrimental they are. Dr. McCullough's got a great book out called EMF. Uh, Dr. Deborah Davis, the world leading authority on this, just goes, goes into it. Susan talks about even on the Apple iPhone, it tells you you shouldn't have that within three to four inches yeah. of your body. Um, and it goes into all these things. So when people talk about this, they don't understand that science now, I said I said it on the Nurses Podcast. Um, I got interviewed by the Ask the Nurses Podcast. And we talk about science. And I said, look, guys, I could make a study that proves daylight doesn't exist. I, I'll do it 365 days of the year between the hours of 11 p.m. and 3 a.m. So look, daylight doesn't exist. You know, And it's, if people understand what are the parameters behind those studies, who's done them, what benefits yeah. do they do they do they gain from it? Like these vaccines and people behind them. What are the benefits they gain? Um, and the companies, all these things that you, you mentioned, you know, track and trace control because they want society of good people. What they say is good people, you know, people that won't um, won't speak out. All the all the people I know, the best people in the world, really, the ones that are free thinkers, free thinkers, the critical 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 thoughts, people that they're, they're very they're very much you know. Um, say disobedient to these things because it's like people think they're a good person for going along with what the government says it's like they're not a good person you know vir- virtue um, and obedience yeah are very much like it's just like cowardice to me you know when you, when you when you know what's morally correct in your heart there's a difference between what's legal and what's actually right and unfortunately people have got that very much confused and it's like oh I'll just go along with it. And as David Icke talks about the totalitarian tiptoe, you know, you start, starts off there, ends up down there because you just give mm-hmm. an inch and an inch and an inch. And all of a sudden, you know, they've taken a mile. They've taken a mile and they, and they're doing it right now. And I've, I've, this is why I'll, I'll be honest, I'll, I'll be back in the UK in a, in a week or so, but I've been out here for a while because when I started doing this, Jake, no one else was fighting. I was like, I was driving around. I was in everything that I was doing normally, but it was like, well, there's no, no real life because everyone else is standing at home in home, you know, at home and, and doing as they're told. But now it seems that more people are becoming like no, it's really civil civil disobedience across the board. I've seen it in France, I've had to backtrack, Greece. We need it. And the only way out of this, you know, as I said before, you can go and do little protests at Hyde Park, but there's there's only one this is the reason they're also employing these policemen that have literally got no empathy. That, um, and I said to, said to him the other day, wait until you've got robots on the streets because then you're going to have no, no humans to even talk to. And so we need to stop this in, in, in the bud, really nip it in the bud. And uh, I know you've got a few things going on. You're, you're creating a video. You've got people sending you videos about why they won't, won't, won't take the jab. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, my background, um, so I used to be a video editor, um, done video editing jobs, um, uh, a few here and there. Um, I actually studied media production at uni, graduated from that like five years ago, six that, years ago. That's around. that that's kept you in good stead during this, hasn't it? Seeing what they're doing. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's a that's the uh, other thing is I've been able to show people the kind of propaganda they're going to be pushing out about eight months before they do it, and um, I actually got a lot of back backlash for it because uh, some people that were. It's actually from both sides. So, like, you know, there's people that were completely on the side of the government saying, oh, my God, you're just scaring people. Why, why are you telling people there's going to be vaccine passports? Why are you scaring people with fake propaganda? I was like, I'm not scaring people with fake propaganda. I'm just, this is, I'm preparing you for the kind of adverts you're going to see. And I, I used to be a digital marketing um, specialist. I used to work in SEO. You know, I used to do search engine optimization. I know how... You know, Google works. I know how advertising agencies work. I know how digital marketers work. 
And when you start to see, mate, these 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 governments have spent fucking millions on these campaigns, right? And the shit they come out with is just it's quite embarrassing considering they've spent millions on the propaganda they've pushed out and it's it's half assed and it doesn't look good at all. But the fact is they've been pushing it out. And yeah, it has helped me a lot. The video I'm creating, uh, there's a few. Um, there's going to be a mixture of different ones. So there's going to be showing people, you know, there's a, I'm basically just going to show people that there's um, a lot of us around the world that are going to be resisting the vaccine. And we do not, there's a lot of us that do not want the vaccine. And I say the word resisting because it's coming to a point where we are resisting it. We, at first it was just declining it. Then it became refusing it. Now we're resisting it. We are resisting it because now they're going to start in basically impacting our everyday lives with these these stupid vaccine passports where they're going to tell people you can't even participate in normal parts of society if you this don't is, have a vaccine. This is the problem, right? Because people are crumbling. I get so many messages from my dad. What, what happens if this? What happens if that? I'm like, first of all, mandate isn't law. Mandate, compulsory. These words aren't law. They're, they're legislations, but they're, and you can, and that's why anything that's gone to the, the court has been thrown out when it comes to, comes to COVID. But these words, I keep on saying them, like weapons of mass destruction, people start to fucking believe it. Stay at home, save lives and all these things. And they're very, very clever with that. And even if their campaign sucks, as, as a digital expert yourself, all they need to do is keep on repeating it, keep on repeating it, and it gives them people's psyches. And they think, oh, my God. Now, now people I know that have taken the jab, they didn't want it because they want to go on holiday. Um, or they want to be able to travel. And it's like, is yeah. your overall health really worth that? You know, at, at what point? So this is the problem is that a lot of people, they don't think about the implications. They've taken vaccines their whole life. I've taken vaccines my whole life. I'm not an anti-vaxxer. I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm not someone who would ever say no to something like a yellow fever vaccine if I needed it. But when it comes to vaccines that have only had a few months of dabbling in half assed trials by corrupt pharmaceutical companies, that's when you start to ask questions. What the hell is going on? When I did the research, and I was, I was bringing up the, you know, all peer reviewed research about vaccines. The average vaccine takes around 10.71 years to create safely, uh, to safely bring out and uh, bring out to fruition. Even Fauci said there was seven years, an average of seven years. We've done it in a matter of months and we didn't know the long term. We don't know the long term implications. We didn't actually know the full short term implications, which is why as soon as it came out, people were having allergic reactions to it. They hadn't done the trials properly. We know that they haven't done it properly. I was citing the BMJ with Peter Do uh, with Peter Doshi's research, and um, uh, he basically crunched the numbers of the Pfizer vaccine, and he was like, "This is not effective. It's not effective. It's nowhere near ninety nine or ninety five percent effective. However effective they said, they he was crunched the numbers, and it was nowhere near. It's like around thirty percent, if that. And when you start to see that they're rigging the they're rigging the numbers. People are like, no, 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 no. They wouldn't lie to us. The government wouldn't lie to us. I've got mates that get that have had the vaccine and still getting fucking sick. And the next thing they say is, like, oh, yeah, the vaccine was never meant to stop us from getting sick. It was to stop us from dying. So which is it? If it's not making you immune, how is it called a vaccine? How can we call it a vaccine if it's not immunizing you? If, if you're still getting sick, you're not immune. And that's the issue is that people aren't realizing this isn't a normal vaccine. And like I said, I'm not an anti-vaxxer. I'll take a yellow fever vaccine if it meant actually saving my life because I don't, I don't know how, how I'd be. My immune systems, I don't know what my immune system's like, to be honest, but I don't, I've heard things about yellow fever, for example, and I probably would take it, but I would never allow someone to force me to take it. And um, that's the difference is about choice, you know, having that choice and where you have a yellow well, fever well, vaccine, which is tested compared to an mRNA vaccine, which isn't fully tested. When you're talking about Robert Malone, who was saying, "Look, this is this is messed up. Like we don't know the implications." And the guy who's created it is saying about his own bloody creation, "Look, we've got to rethink what's going on. You've got to take you know who, which one are you going to listen to? Are you going to listen to the corrupt pharmaceutical companies that have been caught out many a times and have to pay." Like billions in damages because they've killed and permanently hurt people or you're going to listen to people that are risking their entire lives warning you speaking out against the scientific establishment 
that are literally telling you not to take this thing mm -hmm. or to be cautious. I'm going to take the advice of the people risking their lives to inform us, not the pharmaceutical companies that are going to be profiting off our um, demise, essentially. They don't care about us. And, uh, yeah, so I went on a bit of a tangent there. No, 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 mate. I was going to say, when it comes to other vaccines, if you want to, uh, if you want, I've got loads of information about all of them. Um, I am pretty much anti-vaccine just because of the damage I've seen from the amount of people I, I've dealt with, mums, dads, their children, um, when it comes to actually building immunity. Like, I'm not averse to having um, a Myers cocktail, having things put in that are actually going to boost the immune system. When it comes to, the problem is it's why um, toxicologists and vaccinologists don't work together because toxicologists say, what happens to the thermarosol? What happens to the aluminium, the carbolic acid, the MSG yeah. once it's in the body? And they say, oh, it goes. He goes, no, it doesn't. And this is why. Probably it's about 80 percent of the blood-brain barrier. You get heavy metals going to them. Brain's got propensity for heavy metals. You know, and these things go on. We can we can talk about that another thing. But there's and this is and when you go deep into some of the some of the things like measles and smallpox and what actually caused it and what they said caused it and how there's charts, big pharma just took the credit when everything was coming down from sanitation. There's lots that we can go into in that, but we we work with it another time. But then there's the argument that you just said there, which I want to get onto. Um, we talk about so I'm gonna get I'm gonna get onto that in a minute. I saw Denise Walsh the other day on a show. Someone tagged me in a clip and she was talking ab about it. And then one of the other people went, well, Denise, if it's between you and Professor Chris Whitty, I'm going to go with Professor Chris Whitty. And it's like, right, what the most, the guy who's completely corrupt, how many times does government have to lie to you before you understand what's going on? Secondly, what about all the other professors, scientists, et cetera, that are coming out, that have been censored, that are saying this is complete, you know, nurses that have come to me, like quit their jobs because of what they're doing. Doctors have quit their jobs, you know, can't be a, a part of it. What? So they're not relevant because the mainstream um, doesn't put them on TV. And as you said before, you know, the top four vaccine manufacturers over the last 10 years, this is a clip I wanted to give you for the video. The last 10 years alone, you know, they've paid out over 35 billion in fines for falsifying science, falsifying it, bribing government officials, lying to doctors and killing tens or even millions of people, tens of thousands of millions of people, yeah, if you actually told the truth. And you want me to trust these guys? That, that's with drugs that have been FDA approved and vaccines that have been FDA approved, right? Let alone ones that haven't. And my inbox is full of, of messages from um, sisters, brothers, fathers, mothers, you know, whatever, just showing me that, Ryan, this is what's happened to Mike. Can you, can you help? Uh, dead, injured, paralyzed, convulsing, yeah. you know? And I say, to, I say to people all the time, I mean, and this is for another, maybe the topic for uh, discussion for another, another day, but... I say these are not adverse reactions. These are what happens when you inject the body with, with poison. You know, you're you're actually infiltrating the nervous system. Like you're poisoning the body, and the nervous system can't deal with it, and it can't. And this is why how many people you've seen walking around, they're literally shaking because their nervous system is like, I've been pumped full of toxins, whether it's carcinogens, heavy metals, undisclosed ingredients. We're not even we're not even allowed to know. Uh, and so, are you going to trust these guys who? <laughs> Absolutely yeah, fucking exactly and so i'm like how you've got to be critically or is it um i think it's a biblical text it says by their by their um fruit by their fruits they shall be known or by their by their actions they shall be known and it's like how many right. yeah and and to me it's like you've got to be completely batshit crazy to to believe it but even to just be like i'm going to take it because i might get my freedom back and, and this is it's an oxymoron i know of course, especially if you're there, or, or if, you, if you haven't got your health, you haven't got anything. You know, a, the quote I like to use is, "A man hasn't got his health." You know, he's only got. If a man's got his health, he's got a million dreams. When he hasn't, he's got one, and that's to be healthy. And these people have irreversible damage to themselves, uh, and they're not even reporting. That studies have come out saying that the amount of people getting these reactions they've been massively underplayed um, from VARS, as well from the Yellow the Yellow Car Foundation. There's so many of them, um, and so. You know, this is this is where people don't understand. This is going towards communist China, right? Where you don't get the vaccine, or you don't don't get where don't do what we say, then you don't travel. You don't. You can't. You can't buy a plane ticket. You can't buy a, a social plane credit ticket. system. Mm -hmm. The SCS, and that's that's exactly what the Black Mirror episode was all about. You know, your 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 score, your social score, and that's you know a lot of people saying we're not heading towards communism or China. Even people on our side, they don't believe that, you know, we're going towards a China style system. You know, I think that even for a lot of people is so far fetched and people, they can't 
comprehend it. I know it's so hard to comprehend something like that until it happens. And that's something that we can't allow to happen because when you start to, if you see what China has become because of communism, and a lot of people love communism. I have no idea why. A lot no, of people say I. this. No There's a lot, a lot of people that quote, you know, they say the same shit. They're like NPCs. They say communism works in theory. They sound like Homer Simpson in the fucking um, Simpsons. And it's like, well, for it to work in theory, it has to work with human behavior in theory. It cannot physically work with human behavior. Therefore, it cannot work in theory. The only way it can work in theory is if it strips us, strips us of being human. And the, the way you do that is you can tr- completely strip our emotion. And if you see what China's become, they've, especially with Maoist China, and this is one of the reasons why they uh, don't value anim- animals, is that um, I believe uh, when I was doing the research about, you know, what psychologists and sociologists were studying about Maoist China with Chairman Mao, um, you know, if you were kind to animals, that was a sign of weakness. You couldn't mm. be kind to animals. And that was to basically completely desensitize their population to violence and if you see what they do not only to animals but to each Uh other you start to see like that place is not what we are led to believe and uh you know a lot of people say oh you haven't been to china you don't always like there's enough i've seen of china to know that it's not a place i would ever want to live where you can literally be declined to getting on a train based on your score or where they literally cut up dogs in front of you and they believe that. Yeah, that's horrific. Torturing. I'm, I'm vegan, so I don't even eat meat anyway. So I don't agree with any form of, you know, um, you know, any sort of killing of animals. But the Chinese did take it, do, they do take it a step far and uh, further. And they, they literally believe that torturing the animals gives them some sort of special powers or something like that, like that makes it taste better. And the adrenaline, the adrenaline, I believe is what they were dis- uh, discussing. They said the adrenaline and the, the, the fear in the animals. It's what, it's what they talk about when they talk about, um, adrenochrome or something like that. Yeah. Adrenochrome. Yeah. That's what they you know. Yeah. And yeah. And so, I mean, that, that's, that can go deep down. But, I, but what you're saying is, you know, it's, I think Jordan Peterson come out and said once, I think the most arrogant, he said the most arrogant statement I've ever heard is that's not real communism. He says, because that means is if I was in charge, I'd have done it better. And yeah. it's like, you would have, would you? You would have. You'd have been the person. Hey, most, to this right. most people can't even keep their room intact, let yeah. alone, you know, if they can't even control their own lives, right? How the fuck do they think they can control this like 60 million people in the UK? How do they think they're going to be in China, for example? How do you think they control over a billion people? They have to literally strip them of being human. Mm-hmm. They cannot be human. Otherwise, every single person would be independently minded. When you have ind- independently minded people, everyone will do what they want to do, uh, obviously within reason, but they won't conform to the rules that are set out, especially with over a billion people. The way you do that, you strip them of their, you know, basically of their sanity, which is why, um, I don't know if you've seen the videos in China where people are literally being forced to vaccinate. You know, they've been oh, forced yeah, yeah. to kill, and like they're, they're killing their cats and dogs mm-hmm. because they thought it was carrying COVID. You know, but just, this is, but this is where, like, um, this is why we've gone down the, the thing of group think. You know, they were talking about the freedom of speech in America is the only place left. Um, because even over here now, people are getting um, fined and stuff for saying certain things. And, and now they've gone, I saw something, I think it was yesterday, it said, we're not even, we're not going after freedom of speech anymore. We're going after, uh, after freedom of thought, uh, even if you think the wrong thing. Uh, and this is, you said before, group think, because this is where, like, when it comes to politics, left or right, I think it's all bullshit, you know. Um, it's all part of the same nonsense. You get the option to vote for one or two idiots. Um, so that's not for me. But when it comes to certain values, you know, I have got conservative values in terms of the individual um, rather than the group. If everyone is the best version of themselves they can be, that makes a fantastic society, as you said before. Absolutely. Yeah, being like, getting your bed, you know, keeping yourself in shape, eating well taking care of your house and everyone else does that. Perfect. Not, you know, I think it's people like to take um, um, pseudo moralistic roles on big social um, events because it makes them feel that look better to their friends and family rather than taking care of their own life. 
and that's the problem because people some people want government because they they want to be paid up the, the universal income remember some people right now uh jake what they're dealing with is they got they're so devoid of of um anything purposeful meaningful in their life that they love drama and so watching this unfold is something that they're clinging to and they're they're clinging to it because it gives them you know meaning in their life and it means that they're they're also getting paid to do nothing and that's something else that we, we've gone away from and this has all been part of the you know breaking down the, the family unit telling people they can women they can be everything to everyone you know, you know men and women are the same um all these group think you know it's, it's all part of it and it's led us to, to people being like you know, I'll just, to, just, and that's the other thing, just tolerate it. It doesn't matter if it's right or wrong, if you think it's right or wrong, just tolerate it. And that's what it's got to do with this, you know, just, just tolerate whatever it is and don't make just any tolerate. sound. Yeah, just tolerate it. Oh, it's okay. It just, if you just, if you just don't, and that's the way when you stand up and say things, getting sensitive, yeah. cancelled and stuff, but people that come out and say stuff, they're just speaking the truth. And unfortunately, you know, if one person says it or millions do, the truth is always the truth and you can't get away from it. And, you know, how people can't see this right now, what's going on after everything has been 17 months of it. I mean, it's actually like baffling, but there are still people that, you know, the majority of people going along with it. And so what do you, I mean, with, with what you, I mean, you, you're, you're going on Saturday, you know, it's not just a little bit of, of a, a, a jolly up in the park. They say it's going to be an actual march on Saturday. That's going on. <sighs> yeah, so... Fuck knows what happened, but um, I don't know the names of the people that were organising it or anything like that. I have no idea what organise organisation is organising it. I don't know what's going on, but um, it turned out that we're not going to be doing a march. Right. Or so they said. Um, we're going to be having a picnic in Hyde Park. And that's apparently, you know, it's a get-together get to keep our vibrations high and all that stuff. And keep our soul strong and I don't know whatever bollocks they said in that and uh, conveniently um, the same the, there's a thing I saw about the pride movement having also and I quote a picnic at the park on the same day yeah. to protest for their rights and that's when I was like we're going to have two people that want to protest for their rights have a picnic in the park and don't get me wrong i don't have any anything against like the lgbtq lot it's just they're not you know having a picnic in the park on the same day with our group you know it just it it was it was screaming set up you know there's a lot of people in our group for example that are trump supporters they're right wing or they're conservative like us I consider myself a libertarian conservative, yeah, um, I mean, yeah. conservative libertarian. Mm. You know, I, I I used to be a classical liberal, so I used to believe in liberal ideas, and I used to believe in, you know, what a liberal used to believe in. Um, however, that's completely changed to what you know. I, I guess Dave Rubin. I don't know if you watched the Rubin report. He's a bit of a classical liberal, or he, I think he claims to be. And um, you know, when you have those kinds of groups of people where you have, I believe a lot of people that are going to Pride are going to be, you know, they're going to hate the Trump supporters. They're going to hate the people that are going to these freedom rallies. And it seemed like a setup. They've got a, pit, a picnic in a park for uh, the Pride guys, the Pride people. And you've got a picnic in the park for people literally protesting for their freedom, which is to retain their body autonomy to make sure they're not they're not coerced into vaccines and to actually get their livelihoods back and it, a lot of those people are conservatives they are you know uh, christian so i know a lot of the christians and the, uh, the pride lot don't get along and to me that just screamed like a it was a setup a weird setup and for us not to be marching just seemed like it was a after everything they've done you know they've just implemented the immunity passports, the vaccine passports. You know, the, the last thing we should be doing is having a fucking picnic in the park. So now we're going to be doing a march. Um, I believe we're going to be marching. Um, I'm not going to say where yet, but um, we are going to be marching. Because um, there's definitely, be I think there's definitely, there's definitely people infiltrating this movement as well, mate. As I said before, I've, I've heard from my oh, friend who said like, these are some of my friends that have been going, you know, they've been, they've been like, for years they've been, backing me and what i do but they've always been a little bit like oh that's a bit far-fetched now they're like right mate you you're right like there's there's 
there's people that pretending to be on our side that are stopped. Like, for example, he said last time you all went, instead of there being like one group of people going the right direction, they were splitting things off and people were putting flares, oh, that, flare, flares up that weren't part of you. And I was like, mate, they're going to be doing it all the time. They, the police are known for this. The police put people in those situations to start a row that they can come in and, and, and arrest people. They've done this loads. Sorry to cut you off. I want you to carry on. But just so people understand, be aware when you go into these things, there will be police and other people that are not on your site in marching with you, and they will look to cause confrontation so they can they can call the event, you know, unruly or a mob or whatever it is. So just be aware of that. Yeah, mate, I completely agree. And it's um, yeah, you know, I've been going to the protest since last year. You know, I've been going uh you know, really making sure that we get our voices heard. And these protests started literally with a few hundred people. Uh, there was a bit more, maybe a couple thousand, and it whittled down to a few hundred people by um, January. And, uh, you know, it was dark, mate. Like, you really saw, like, the police, were prop- they were just... They were tackling women to the ground, old people to the old ground. Old people, mate. I saw that, mate. I'd be, I'd be hard mate, to be there. Care. Mate, I'd they be hard to care. watch that. I don't think I could watch that without getting involved. Mate, that would really, be... it, well, that's the thing. You, the, the thing is, if you get involved, they want people to get involved. That's the issue. They, you're in a, we're in a very tricky situation. We're in a rock and a hard place where the police are absolutely protected from any sort of, you know, especially when you find out what they've been doing, where they've been raping and killing women. And, uh, you know, all these kinds of things that they do. And don't get me wrong, I don't hate the police. I just think there's a lot that we for, we shouldn't forgive them for and we should understand about the police as an institution and a, a corporation. It is a corporation. It's there also to make profit. It's meant to serve us as the people, but it's not like that anymore. Mm. They're there to make money. And during the lockdowns, they were actually profiting and they were getting money. They were getting paid to serve notices and find people for opening their businesses or going for walks. That's why they wouldn't let people off. You know, they wanted that money. It was almost like commission for them. And I think that's when you have a really weird breakdown in civil discourse between the people that are meant to protect, protect you and the people themselves is when the people that are meant to protect you are getting commissioned for fining you for doing your God's given right. And I'm not a religious person, but I will use that phrase. It's your God given right to travel, not to just drive, to travel in general. Your, your God given right. No one can tell you you can't travel absolutely no one that is your god-given right you know you are allowed to go wherever you wish it's actually in your passport no. jay in, in the first page of your passport you open it up on the left hand side it says whoever has this has to be a that has to be helped to travel so when people say you can't travel if you actually say and you open up your passport the first page on the left hand side whoever holds this passport under the law of the majesty of the queen has to be helped uh, and aided to to travel wherever they want it's i'm gonna check right that out i'm gonna check that out check it out I'm going to definitely, do, yeah, I'm definitely actually going to, yeah, because there's a lot of, you know, obviously as soon as you say I've been driving, that's a legal term, mm. whereas you've got the lawful term, which is I was traveling. And um, aside from that, the protests were all about, you know, it was, the, that was when you saw the breakdown between the people and the elites and the people that were supposed to be protecting us. You know, we aren't being protected. They think, you know, the, by following orders, they're doing the right thing, but they're not protecting us. They are, they were crippling people. You know, I've had messages from people that have been borderline suicidal because they've had to shut their cafes or their whatever business they had, or they've lost their jobs, or their kids can't go to school and they're struggling because it's tough to juggle a job while you're meant to be homeschooling your kids. Your kids are going nuts because they're locked indoors all day. This is so, it's been an absolute colossal fuckfest. And Mm. the people that have been enforcing it, which are the police, have not been protecting us. They've been serving corrupt politicians, corrupt scientific officials that have, you know, like uh, Sir Patrick Valance, I don't even want to call him a sir, but yeah, Mm. Patrick Valance, he's got like, I think he almost had a million pounds in, of shares in the vaccine companies. So, and so is Hancock. Well, that's just it. They've all got their 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 dirty little hands in you know in the pie, and, and uh, they want to make sure that the pie grows, and they want to make sure that they get as much as they can out of it, and they will all have a swift exit. I mean, you start to see people exit, like Cummings. He exited all right, and uh, he's he's come back with a vengeance, but I think it's a bit of a 
it's a bit of um it's a bit of a play to be honest as a stage and uh you know you've got Hancock he kind of just got forgotten about they they accept the little you know public embarrassment and then they 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 fly off in when the wind. Yeah, when you look at it, all, it's all it's all set up, right? It's just it's just Hollywood for ugly people politics, right? And it's it's all pretty much. And so when you, I don't know if you saw the interview with Dr. Ben Martin um, recently, yeah. who who was interviewed. So he was interviewed. Um, one second, where was it? He was interviewed. Uh, it's on Odyssey, um, and it's like a manufactured illusion. Doctor, sorry, Doctor David Martin with Reiner Formich. Um, and he and Dr. David Martin, he's been in pay, he's, he's very, very one of the most intelligent men on, on, on the earth. And he talks about he goes into the, into law and patent patents. And this goes all the way back to the 90s, my man. I want you to watch, I'll send you a link, have a watch of it. It's it'll blow your mind how deep this goes. People say he's been in, you talked about Klaus Schwab, the, the new world order, right? He's even got a book out talking about it. And then Dan was talking about how it's actually. In the new world order is actually a a, a like uh, a mirage for what they actually went on which dan told me what it was called because I'm, I mean, I'm interviewing dan um we actually did an interview last week but he's like you know what ryan actually want to update some stuff so i'm doing it again and it's called yeah. like the, the new a new something something I'll, I'll, I'll get onto it but he was saying and um they've had investigative journalists go into this and look at how long this has been going on for um i think he was talking about um Catherine Fitz and a few others that gone into it and they're saying this is this is like the, the companies behind it and like the financial reset and what they've been doing. It's just planned. Like they were they were getting things set up two and a half years before, two years before this even went down. Uh, and the patents for certain things were being talked about in the 90s and 2000s which is crazy, right? When people look into it. So this is this is how long we're fighting uh, something that the thing is what we've got on our on our side is that humans um if we all come together there's nothing they can do um, yeah because we've got the overwhelming majority of us and also we are unpredictable no matter what they do we can push back and so we we need to get to, to get this message out to people as much as possible this is why i want to do this today because when are you putting those videos out jake uh, so I'm getting all of the videos. Um, so at the protests on Saturday, I'm going to be getting group ones. I'm going to have people sending the group ones to me as well. Um, I'm going to make sure that, you know, everyone around the world has a voice and make sure that we show people that aren't necessarily confident um, about voicing their opinion, that there, is, there are a lot of other people that think the same way, that aren't getting the vaccine for a multitude of different reasons. Um and hopefully I'll have it out by next week. I'm going to be working on it. I've recently just uh, handed in my notice for my job, so I'll be leaving that. And I'll be working on this until I obviously um, working on this full time until I can find something a bit more. What? What? Have you done that because of the vaccine? No, 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 no. Oh, no. no it's a uh, well. To be honest, it's a it's a corporate job. Okay. And um, I was on the verge of getting a promotion and i still said you know what there's just um there's a lot for us to do and i can't do that if i'm um you know if i'm in like some sort of management role i'm gonna have to work overtime i'm not gonna have you know time to myself i barely have time to myself as it is and i just thought this is you know it's just it's just terrible the the amount of time I should have to be able to push back because a lot of people that don't have the time and I was working I'm you know when I'm at work I can barely use my phone if I if I, if I quickly go to Lou that's when I use my phone to do a bit of research or post or whatever you know I, um and uh you know I was doing my research when I was getting home from work sucking mm -hmm. up so much time so now I just thought you know what this let's do this full time until I can find something a bit more flexible so I can still earn a living and basically prepare. And, uh, you know, I've got a uh, video editing background, so I know exactly what we need to do. And I know exactly the propaganda that will get people engaged. And we know, you know, I hate calling it propaganda, but you do get good and bad propaganda at the end of the day it will be a form of i guess it is, you can call it propaganda yeah i wouldn't call it propaganda in my opinion i would just more true. say it was yeah it's more about you know just giving people a voice you know i would say it's giving people a voice and you know i i studied a lot of um in my own time i studied uh especially was at, at uni i was studying um 
you know, the Nazi propaganda where you had the uh, propaganda minister, you had Goebbels, I think that's how you say his name, you know, he, he was Hitler's basically propaganda minister. He was, you know, pushing out the propaganda for him. And uh, you had the Kremlin in, in, in the Soviet Union and he studied how they pushed out their propaganda for the for the communist regime. You see how, you know, um, even, you know, during the Brit- British, um, you know, the British Empire, you know, even during time of war during World War II. The, well, the, look the British, did, yeah, look what they did during World War II. They, they manufactured, yeah, of course, yeah. yeah. And, they manufactured um, lot, the America coming into it. <laughs> well, that's the thing is that you, a lot of people don't, still don't, not, even I'm not completely 100% of the knowledge about what um, World War Two actually consisted of. So I'm, I'm not, I know there's a lot of people yeah. that have a very strong opinion on either side of World War II there's people that are like look the Brits were in the wrong they started the war there's a lot of people say well the Nazis did this they invaded Poland and there's a really really good documentary called The Greatest Story Never Told um, yeah you, on a bitch 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 you, have bitch, you watched it bitch bitch shoot I keep saying it wrong I have, I've seen a bit, a bit of it bitch yeah. shoot yeah, yeah. Um, I've seen a bit of it I was told to watch it I've watched a little bit I need to watch it all yeah, um, so it's, so it's a long, it's a long, yeah, it's like six. Yeah, I, I watched it twice and I was like, okay, um, make, there's a lot yeah. of things to, to it, you know, and um, the truth probably somewhere in the middle, but it's like, uh, it's interesting to have another perspective on things. This is a perspective. Uh, mm. But what's interesting is that perspective is considered illegal. And that's what's dangerous. Is that then right. that that that's a form of controlling your thoughts? It's the only right. high course in the world that is is illegal to talk uh, took against, and right. you get put into prison. Exactly. You can't. You know, there was the Sikh on course. So my background, you know, um, my background, my my grandparents were Sikh. They were, you know, they there was a Sikh Holocaust that happened. Um, these were the, obviously um, God knows how many years ago. But that was a Holocaust, but you wouldn't get, con- you wouldn't be put in prison for denying the Sikh Holocaust, for example. Mm-hmm. But there's a, you know, if you did deny the Jewish Holocaust, uh, the, the Jewish Holocaust in Nazi Germany, you can literally be in, pr- be in prison for that. And I think, I personally believe the Holocaust happened. And I, if someone said they don't believe that the Holocaust happened, to me, that doesn't bother me because I, the only thing I can do is to present the evidence that can change their mind. If you have to lock someone up to say that it did happen, that's when people start to raise questions. And that's when it becomes a bit of a dangerous battle between what information are we given? Well, mate, when you look into it, when you, if, you, if you watch it a couple of times, you watch a few other things and the stories and things like that. Yeah. It's very interesting about the Red Cross, the numbers that the Red Cross brought out. Yeah, these are not like... I think it was 300,000 or something, was it? 300,000. And it's not saying that people... And so, okay, they're not saying that Jewish people didn't die in it. They're just saying that like the numbers were hugely inflated. The first time 6 million was brought out, it was in like 1930, I think. And that's why 1913 in the New York Times before even World War One. And so there's, there's a big thing that goes into it there. The numbers has been changed. And like I said before, the truth probably lay somewhere in the middle. But it's interesting yeah. to have another perspective. And when they say, like, what started the World War? Well, it was Polish, Polish were massacring Germans. So they said that they were massacring Germans. Yeah. And he said, like, stop. I was going to come in. And they said, no. And so this is what it makes it, it goes deep. And there's a lot of things. And the propaganda they use, you know, they said, what about all the pictures of Auschwitz or the, uh, of the camps? And, there was, and people say, well, they literally used the pictures of the gulags and changed the uniforms over. Wow. And, that, and that's what, and so, you know, and, and you know, no, I would never know, but we don't know. That's the problem. We wouldn't, wouldn't put it past it though. Wouldn't put it past them to do these yeah. things because what they've done, the Germans, sunk, um, no, sorry, they, they sunk their own boat to get into World War, World War um, One. what they did with Pearl Harbor in World War Two. you know, these things, you, you never mate between 9 11 7 7 you can go into all these things right nothing's ever what they they seem you know and um and when, and when they're like the, the two presidents tanzania etc they're coming out saying it's all nonsense they mis- mysteriously go on the missing list you know um don't like what the people are saying you just kill them off but it's so that's probably we can go deep into that but so for people because i cut you off before you get back to tell me jake where are you going to be on saturday i mean you're not going to tell me exactly where you're going to be but you will be marching is there going to be like a meet point yeah, we'll, somewhere where people will know? um so i believe the meeting point will be 
at Hyde Park. I'm not too sure yet. It's still in talks because obviously we only found out yesterday that this was completely going to fail. Um, so the guys are getting together. There's a lot of pe- good people on this side um, that are organising it. Um, official voice, he's going up north in Birmingham to... Um, uh, he's going up there to support them. Um, so down in the south in the London, in London, um, there's going to be, we're going to march still. We're definitely going to march. We're still going to do our thing. And um, for the next march, we're definitely going to prepare. We're going to get together and we're going to make sure this is led by people that we can trust because I know when uh, Pat, um, the guy I went live with, obviously, you know, Pat, yeah. Um, he went in the Telegram group and he was like, "This, why are we just going for a picnic in the park? You know, they instantly removed him. They said, why are you hijacking this movement and you removed him or something like that? Um, I might be paraphrasing a little bit, and uh, but that's what I've been told. And um, you start to realise that just over a question, you know, why are we doing this? Like, what the hell are we doing? We should be out there fighting for our freedom, not having a picnic in the park because our rights are literally being eroded and having a picnic in a park is all good in that for your, your, you know, your, your vibe and your, how you feel inside. But I'm not, I'm not a spiritual guy. I'm going to tell you that straight away. I'm not a spiritual, spiritual guy. I'm not religious. I'm not any of that. What will make me feel good is making sure I can do the things I want to do. And I can't do that if we're having picnics in the park while they're taking away our rights. You know, we've got to make sure we're out there fighting and I've come up with a few ideas and I've been studying how, you know, like the Hong Kong protesters have been protesting against the communist regime in China, how, um, you know, Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, how they've protested and, you know, during the civil rights movement, they got their rights, you know, the uh, suffragettes. And there's a lot of controversy about the suffragettes because they were funded by the communists. Um, so there was a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of, iffiness about that but a lot of the way they protested they did it in certain ways and the way they did it was not the way we've been protesting we haven't been protesting properly we've been having parties in the street and it's all well and good i get it people want to have a good time but there's a time for a good time and there's a time to fight for your freedom and you can't do both and i think we need to start doing what's effective rather than what we it's yeah, what is fun, you know. We got to do what is effective, not what is fun. What we believe we should enjoy. Well, in uh, August, the next one, I'll be with you, mate. And um, what I think we should do, if you're up for it, people that are in this thing, maybe have a little group chat between us and put it out to audiences yeah. what we can do. Maybe we go go through that because because I, I know my audience is very engaged. They're very much in on this, uh, and I know yours is. And if we can get that out to them and make people know what, what's going on before rather than just all meeting up and just doing whatever have a bit of a plan in, in place because these you said before these people they are organized and exactly what they're doing one of my friends nick patterson don't know if you know nick he's in australia former UFC, ufc fighter but he's the one who kept his gym open all the way through you probably saw him hold off like 20 police officers at his, at his door through common law but the, he started this thing called the australian peacemakers and they even went after him and they attacked him and and he, and his friends of police uh and he stood up in his, in his um in his power you know he's just he's just he had they put him in jail for 20 days uh, and he's going going through it all um they're going through it all they actually dislocated his shoulder they, they basically what they did they attacked one of his friends and when they went to him, said, what are you doing they took batons out everything like that and he's got a lot of people, legal people on his team and he's putting together some stuff and he says like unless we and he's like unless we start actually standing up to these things. You know, what the, poli- what the police are doing, their tactics, they tend to like go, we're going to pick that person out. They got like eight of them come across. They pick one person, yeah. drag them back in. And he said, it's no good to stand there looking at them. Everyone's sort of getting involved. He said, this was they're wearing a uniform. doesn't mean that they're morally right. And that's the, that's the, prob- that's the, that's the po- stage we're getting to. Obviously, we don't want to come to that. That's the last result. But at some point, you know, you have to stand up and, and fight for what you believe in. And that's what we do, mate. So... Cool. I'm going to let you, you go there, mate, because I know you said before you're super busy. But for people that um, I'm going to put this, try and get this out tomorrow um, or as soon as I can. For people that want to meet you, you'll be in Hyde Park. You're going to probably put some information out on your Instagram page. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And it's and just for people that are my audience that are not uh, familiar with you, Jake, what are your Instagram handles? Where can they find you? Um. So my main one is Jake 
Maverick ninety three. I I think there's a there might be a, a a full stop in between the Jake and the Maverick. Um, but my the one I'm using at the moment that isn't shadow band is Jake Maverick mm-hmm. five, and that's Jake dot Maverick five. Um, right, yeah, both, they've, they've both got dots at Jake dot yeah. Maverick ninety three. Jake uh, at Jake dot Maverick five. Yeah, they both. Yeah, there yeah, we go. Got, yeah, yeah, yeah perfect. So yeah, they, that's where they can follow me. Um, there's going to be, you know, I, I think w- what I want to do is have um, everyone come together in the same uniform or the same colour scheme, a bit like what France did with the Yellow Jacket protests mm-hmm. where they all wear the high vis. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been, you know, I've been talking to people and a lot of people have been saying blue is a really good one because that represents unity, it represents courage, it represents freedom. Um, so that's something that I would consider as that blue looks like, you know, if we all wore, wore blue T-shirts or something like that. Yeah. Um, at the next at the next protest, it's definitely something that we um, need to look into. Or a certain color scheme. Mm-hmm. Um, if everyone wears the same color, it's, it's more impactful rather than yeah. all of us wearing different you know different colors. You know, look at army soldiers and units; they're all wearing yeah, the same yeah. stuff because they're all together. But yeah, yeah, hundred percent, mate. That would definitely be um, be something that. Would and it would stand out and make a big and the bigger the <clears throat> these movements get, you know, they're, they're harder they are to ignore, which is what which is what we are aiming for. You know, the, the mainstream trying to ignore these things, a few thousand or whatever, a few hundred people, and it's like millions, you know, and it's, it's what they do. Unfortunately, um, some people believe them, but we, we're going to get more and more of us going to these things. So, you know, it's it's um. I mean, little tactics like that, I think, go a long way. It shows big unity and it shows a big... I mean, did you go on Monday, just quickly? Did you go on Monday, Jake? I wasn't able to make Monday, unfortunately. Right, um, right. Yeah, so but I heard about Mondays that it was all right at first and then it ended up with people getting pissed again or something like that, just going back to a part and partying. Or, I, that's what I've been told. I just... Um, to be honest, I'm not too sure about what happened, but I'm getting a bit fed up with the partying and I've told people that and I said... And the next one is not going to be any party and we're going to be real. And, uh, you know, the music you can have after, you can do your thing afterwards, do whatever the hell you want. But at the march, we're going to be, we're going to mean business. And I think making sure that, you know, we do what previous people have done, like Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, um, you know, Gandhi, um, to, despite what your thoughts on those people might be, whoever might be watching this, they did, what was necessary and uh yeah they, they did things in a certain way that they knew would have invoked change rather than just getting pissed and on the lash at a uh, party in the middle of Oxford circus you know what i mean so i think we need to start oh, yeah. doing what's effective and we can do it it's just going to take a little bit of organization a little bit uh, of uh, you know swallowing of egos and um i know you know it can be you know, everyone has their own idea of what they want to do Everyone wants to, you know, do this, do that. I think if we just get the ideas on the board, have uh, a look at which ones are going to be the most effective, we can stick with those and we'll be all right. Mm-hmm. And it's in the day, that's it, mate. Like unity is the is the key. Coming together, showing solidarity, and it's going to go a long way. But mate, it's been a pleasure to talk to you, mate. Um, thanks for coming on and doing this because I wanted to get this out to people. Keep doing your thing, and um, I know we'll we're, we're, we're speak off camera, but. Yeah, keep on um, keep on fighting the good fight, mate. Absolutely, mate, and you. So, guys, that was Jake Maverick. What a, uh, a good episode! You know, we went into lots there. And for those of you joining the march on Saturday, you know, as you said before, be careful. There will be info people infiltrating you guys. They'll be trying to look to start fights to try and you know make um, make things into an altercation. So just be very aware of that, and then. You know, go out there with love in your heart and get done what needs to get done. You know, put your yourself forward. Maybe you're not just fighting for yourself, you're fighting for the future and your families and everything else um, that they're trying to take away. It's going to go against this uh, tyrannical government that actually wants to see us into a, a social credit system. So anyway, that was a fantastic conversation with Jake. I know that when we um, we do finally meet up face-to-face, it'll be, um, yeah, it'll be a, a, a great great time and um, looking forward to meeting him on the next one in August and meeting you all there as well but for now get out there support each other support him I know he'll be supporting you and let's get things done okay so um, that's it for this week's show as always if you are dealing with any health issues and you'd like to overcome them 
then please do send me an email at ryan at reviveyourself.co. That's ryan at reviveyourself.co. And I'll get back to you as soon as I can and we can have a chat about how we can help you resolve them. Also, guys and girls, as you're probably fully aware, I'm shadow banned on Instagram. If you do um, try to search for me at Ryan underscore underscore Martin underscore underscore, if you can like, comment, share any and all of my posts to try and break the algorithm, algorithm that's great. Uh, you'll also find on the link tree in my bio there um, a link to my local site, and I'm trying to get everyone over there so we can have these conversations completely uncensored rather than having to, uh, you know, use code words and write things in funny in funny ways so that's uh, obviously instagram ryan underscore underscore martin underscore underscore i'm at locals at revive yourself if you click on the link as well we've got a 10 uh, percent off the subscription right now uh, and also you can find me on telegram revive yourself too otherwise as always stay happy stay healthy and i'll speak to you soon Bye bye if you're struggling with gut issues such as gas, bloating, constipation, diarrhea, indigestion, heartburn, and want to finally be able to eat the foods you love without the crippling after effects, then don't forget to head over to reviveyourself.co and pick up your free copy of The Healing Health Paradigm today.